So let's talk about implementing navigation. There are a number of uh, alternatives we have for implementing navigation in a Windows 8 application. And uh, so let's talk about some of these. First of all, uh, you can just use a hyperlink. Uh, but that's not considered good, as we've seen in the previous demonstration. And uh, we can also use the document object model. That's a JavaScript API to manipulate the contents of the page to dynamically load document fragments. So we can obtain HTML fragments, uh, either construct them programmatically or access them from some data source or something like that, and uh, basically construct it dynamically. And uh, this is the kind of thing that's done, for example, in jQuery in the uh, web environment. Uh, we're not going to get into that here. You can actually uh, do very similar things, but that's not a, a topic that we're going to really get into. We're going to also talk about these two possibilities. We've actually talked about the um, this uh, triple slash syntax and this double slash. Uh, we've talked a bit about that before, so I won't repeat myself here, but this is a Microsoft-specific schema or protocol. So that's a replacement for the HTTP colon slash slash that you typically see in the World Wide Web. Uh, so that is, uh, you can think of that as a protocol. It's not a networking protocol because it's all self-contained within an application. But uh, this is referring to a page within the application, and we talked a little bit about how this triple syntax is actually a standard uh, syntax uh, and what it really means is that uh, this the stuff between the second and third slash is omitted that defaults to your own application package uh, that's typically what you'll do um, if you want to you can specify the name of the package that your resource is contained in in which case you've got double slash and then the name of the package and then a single forward slash and then the page and by the way, all of these possibilities here are within the local context. Uh, there are two contexts available to us. There's a the local context, self-contained within the application, and then there's a the web context where we refer to links out in the outside world. So uh, this is a hyperlink to the World Wide Web. That's obviously HTTP, and this is Microsoft's website. So if you were to actually place a link like that right in your page within your application, then when the user clicks on that, what happens is the application actually launches Internet Explorer. It does not remain in your application because that's your local context within your application. That hyperlink will take you and uh, your application will still be running. What happens is the, your application uh, and Internet Explorer will both appear side by side on the screen, but it uh, is a completely different different application that is running to display that page. Now what if you don't want to do that? What if you want to display the web page within the application? Then you use an iframe. And so instead of going to Internet Explorer, it, to, it really just displays that web content within an iframe in your application. Now uh, there's another thing here. This is uh, HTML control. That is defined uh, in WinJS. It's in a namespace called WinJS.UI, and the name of the control is HTML control. And it enables you to include an HTML page dynamically within your application. And that's not an external URL. That's going to be referring to some .html page within your application. So it's basically how you can display one page within another. But um, all of these possibilities exist, but there's actually a better way, which we're going to talk about next. Now, in this demonstration, we're going to take a look at that better way that I was referring to. So of all the different ways of linking to other content, we're going to see in this example, it's titled Simplistic Navigation. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the various ways of working with this, with HTML hyperlinks, and we're going to see problems with that. With the iframe element, which is OK, but it's, it's going to be a web context. It's not going to be a local context that you're dealing with there. In some cases, you want a local context. There's also the HTML control that you can use. 
Uh, but um, you know, all the uh, shortcomings and difficulties that you run into with these techniques uh, can be fixed using a single page application. This is how the built-in navigation model works. When you use Visual Studio to create a navigation template project, it builds into your application the architecture for a single page application. And so we're going to take a look at implementing that directly ourselves to get a better understanding of how that works programmatically. In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at uh, some simple aspects of navigation. And so in order to uh, get underway, we're going to open up an example that I've provided. And uh, so we have a few examples to look at here. The first two examples are where we are navigating from default.html to page1.html. So here we are in default.html and we're navigating to page1.html. And uh, notice that this one is just a relative link. It's internal within the application. That's going to end up uh, remaining within the application. It's not going to go out onto the World Wide Web. It's not an HTTP request, but it is going to do something that's not really all that appropriate. It's going to take us to another page. We're going to leave default.html, which is not considered best practice. The only reason I'm showing you here is that this is probably what you're already familiar with in terms of your experience with the World Wide Web. And uh, basically this will work, but it's not really uh, good. So we'll see, when we run it, we'll see why that is. But uh, these first two examples are just anchor tags with an href referring to page1.html. This one has nothing in front of it. This one has ms-appx colon, that's that schema that we were talking about. And there's that triple slash. And as I was saying, you can use double slash and then the name of the package and then another forward slash if you want to. This is unnecessary in this case because we're just all within one single application package here. And so that's the, uh, the syntax we'll use. But uh, before we uh, go on to these other ones down here, let's just run it to take a look at the first two examples and why it's not appropriate. So if you take this uh, first link, it takes us to another page and we've lost all of our CSS, it looks terrible. And uh, basically that's not the way we want things to work. Uh, let's take the link back to the main page and we'll see that the second one here does exactly the same thing. It just uses the triple slash syntax to do it. And uh, now that we've seen what they're like and how they don't really work all that well, we can kind of forget about that. But uh, what happens if you want to do the same kind of thing but link to an external page? So. That's the, um, this third example here. And it looks pretty much like what we were doing in the first two examples. We've got an anchor with an href equals. The, the difference is, is that this is actually going on the World Wide Web. This is using HTTP protocol as opposed to ms-appx protocol. It's not really protocol. It's referred to as a schema in that case. But uh, what happens here is interesting. It actually does not even stay in your application. It goes completely independent and opens up a separate browser. So let's try that. Take that link and it opens up Internet Explorer off to the side here. And uh, so we've got two applications side by side and it took us away. And there's a good reason for that. That is uh, this application can't necessarily trust JavaScript that might be in some arbitrary website somewhere. And so that's a separate context. For security purposes, it div your application divides its environment into a local context where it can do a lot of things like access the system and invoke JavaScript that comes from within your application, as opposed to the web context, which is completely independently displayed within a browser. OK, so let's uh, close that close that as well. And what's next here? So this is using an HTML control. And it's used to host simple HTML content within your application, but it does not involve navigating to it. What it does is that HTML control allows you to specify arbitrary page content that gets displayed within the page that you're in. And in a way, that's actually quite similar to what goes on within the um, the built-in navigation model that the, the navigation template provides you. 
uh, but if you want to do it on your own you can do so with this HTML control. Now this HTML control again it's um, it's a WinJS defined control and it's implemented as an HTML div element. There's that data win control attribute. There's the WinJS.UI namespace. That's the name of the control that we're instantiating. It's responsible for uh, injecting the content into this div that represents whatever this, uh, in this case it's an HTML control, but in general any kind of a uh, control will inject its contents into the div that it's defined within. We're providing options to this control. This HTML control takes one option called the URI, and that is a string that's referring to the page that we want to incorporate or pull into this page within this div. So that means that this page one over here, where it says welcome to page one with a link back, that is going to be displayed within that HTML control. So let's see what that looks like. And uh, so you notice that we are in page one. We okay. Well, there you go. That's it. That's that's page one right there with a hyperlink back in. So you notice you don't even have to link to it. It's brought in. It's not like these other ones where there's a link that you go to it. It's actually brought in. So this welcome to page one and this link back. It's kind of silly to have a link back to the page because we're already in it, but if you were to take it, we see a, an issue here. It says uh, the HTML control does not uh, support navigation, but uh, that's the idea of the HTML control, to bring in content and display it within the page that you're in. Probably shouldn't have had that link back, but the next point that we want to take a look at is an iframe. And so an iframe is like an HTML control. The difference is that whereas an HTML control refers to pages within your application, an iframe refers to, uh, well, it can refer to links within your own application or external links, if you wish. Uh, if you do that, then everything that goes on within that iframe is going to be either a local context or host context, depending on the URI that you provide it. So here we have uh, an href. Uh, this is referring to page one. This is the target frame, and that target matches this iframe. And uh, so that's that's these two are connected. This is the actual anchor that refers to the page, and this is the target where that page will be embedded into an iframe. And so in a way it's quite similar to the HTML control. The difference is that this is a WinJS control, whereas iframe is an HTML element. But just to see what that looks like, you can uh, click on this uh, using the iframe, and it will bring in that content and display it here. One difference is that this is statically brought in and visible right off the bat, whereas this requires you to click on the hy hyperlink to obtain that content and bring it back. Now again, clicking on that hyperlink back is kind of silly. We should probably not have that there. Uh, that's not necessarily what you want it to do, but what that's actually done, if, if you look at what's actually happening in here, you see this simplistic navigation and using hyperlinks takes you away. You can see that that's actually being displayed in here. Why is that? Because we were in that other page and we took a link back and, uh, well, I don't know if that makes a whole lot of sense of what's happening there, but it's interesting how that works, actually. It actually it works as you would expect, if you think about it, really. And then uh, there's a better way to do this, uh, and we talk about that uh, a little bit in a previous demonstration where we were talking about navigation. But if you want to uh, just take a look at these two links that we have, this is the first one, Windows Store App Flat Navigation Start to Finish Sample. Now, I've mentioned this before. There's a lot of samples uh, that Microsoft provides. Definitely check that out. Download it and experiment with it. And uh, definitely a worthwhile activity. And uh, then the, uh, the last example here. This is an article on flat navigation. And uh, it has some nice pictures that show you this concept of navigating with a container. 
and navigating from page to page within it. It's one of several different navigation models. Okay, so check that out for more details. And that brings us to the end of this demonstration.